So the 45th president of the United States will now also be the 47th, as Donald Trump claims victory in the US presidential election, saying he's been given an unprecedented mandate. It's the first time anyone has won non-consecutive US elections since Grover Cleveland in 1892. At the age of 78, he also becomes the oldest person elected to the highest office in America, perhaps too old to be called a comeback kid, but a comeback of historic proportions this certainly is. Mr. Trump called his second term in office a new golden age for America and promised, as he put it, to heal the country. Not only has he won the popular vote and the majority of the all-important electoral college votes, his Republican Party has also taken the Senate. The final results for the House of Representatives aren't clear yet, but the Republicans have so far gained seats and could maintain their majority there. Controlling both houses would give Mr. Trump a chance to enact most of his agenda. The Democratic candidate, Kamala Harris, has not commented on the results and has not yet conceded. The task before us will not be easy, but I will bring every ounce of energy, spirit, and fight that I have in my soul to the job that you've entrusted to me. This is a great job. There's no job like this. This is the most important job in the world. Just as I did in my first term, we had a great first term, a great, great first term. I will govern by a simple motto, promises made, promises kept. We're going to keep our promises. <laughs> Nothing will stop me from keeping my word to you, the people. We will make America safe, strong, prosperous, powerful, and free again. And I'm asking every citizen all across our land to join me in this noble and righteous endeavor. That's what it is. It's time to put the divisions of the past four years behind us. It's time to unite. And we're going to try. We're going to try. We have to try. And it's going to happen. Success will bring us together. I've seen that. I've seen that. A victorious Donald Trump there. Well, in a moment, I'll be joined in the studio by the political analyst and executive director of Development Specs Academy, Professor Oke Ikechuku, who's a member of the editorial board of this day newspaper and is also a professor of strategic management and human capital development. But first, I'm joined on the line from Washington by Ambassador Earl Anthony Wayne, who served as a U.S. diplomat from 1975 to 2015 and was Assistant Secretary of State under three U.S. Secretaries of State. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us. I know it's been a busy day uh, for you, so we really appreciate your taking the time to talk to us. What do you think has happened in America with Mr. Trump not just winning the electoral votes, but the popular vote as well? I mean, let's be frank, you, you've um, operated internationally quite a bit, and a lot of people think of him as a fairly chaotic campaigner and president. Well, they do. And um, I think we what we have to look at right now is what does this really tell us? It, it says that people want some changes. They want a, uh, a kind of government that is pushing for more change, more representation of U.S. leadership in the world, more U.S. leadership actually in the world and domestically. And so I think we're going to look for some some big moves on President Trump's part to bring this about, to form a uh, a new administration that can bring about these kind of changes. And we're going to just see where he can take us. It's going to be exciting. Well, it, it certainly sounds like it, but not for those who lost. Uh, but but before we get to Kamala Harris, I mean, perhaps in addition to all the chaos. Um, there was a sense that he is a strong man and the kind of president that America needs right now. There was clearly an appeal that America needs a strong leader to bring the nation back together in one direction and to exert its influence around the world. Now we're going to see what happens with that, where Trump can take that both domestically and in dealing with both our close allies and some of our uh, rivals, particularly China and Russia in particular. 
And I think there's a there's a bit of concern about Russia because he did not seem to be that firm in facing the Russian threat that's out there, especially vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine. So that's going to be one area of, of strong interest. Similarly, people are going to work, look at what he's going to do vis-a-vis -vis China, where he's been tough on the economic issues in dealing with China. And we're going to now see, does he have a different approach? Is he going to take, where is he going to take the United States? Uh, he's focused a lot on United States leadership and what he's talked about. Um, but that leadership means that you need to bring others along with you. And I think that needs yet to be demonstrated as we as we see going forward. And so we're going to look for these signs in the in the next few uh, next weeks ahead and in the beginning of the new administration, which starts in January. And um, what about Kamala Harris? I mean, what, how would you assess the headwinds that turned against her? Well, I think that it it's not that she she did badly in in the sense that she was exerting her leadership and trying to come out on top. She did that fairly well, but she could not overcome the really strong arguments that Trump had that he should now take the lead. There should be a different lead out there. The United States had to be tougher in asserting its leadership in the world and its leadership in the domestic economy. So we're going to see whether he can deliver on those promises. And we're going to be looking ahead to see that new kind of leadership, uh, whether we can see that bold economic leadership, both in domestic affairs and then in trying to reassert U.S. leadership in the world. On that note, uh, I want to thank you very much indeed, Ambassador. I know you've had a long day and I, I really appreciate your taking the time to talk to us. Um, Ambassador Earl Anthony Wayne is a former U.S. diplomat and was Assistant Secretary of State under three U.S. Secretaries of State.